Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell, and today we're going to talk about two Ghost Rider comic books, well one Ghost Rider comic and one Marvel comic that has a few pages in it that feature Ghost Rider, which is uh, you know Marvel's Incoming, which was like a giant $10, uh, definitely overpriced issue, <laughs> and uh, the story was just kind of mad to me, but there's a couple pages in here that kind of uh, benefit us as Ghost Rider fans, so I had to have it as part of the collection. I thought it was going to be Danny Ketch in here, someone told me, they're like, oh, Ghost Rider showed up, and I assumed they meant Danny catch and when i picked it up and it was just a couple pages of johnny blaze i'm like eh, i feel like i could have skipped this issue so so anyway but i still got it so i figured we'll talk about it here and then also ghost rider number four uh so where we last left off we had johnny blaze depowered he is no longer or not johnny blaze sorry he's getting more powerful johnny blaze is the king of hell and he's on earth looking for escaped demons um while lilith and other people are kind of like building armies from hell uh, behind his back and like you know st they're trying to perform a coup and they're tr some demons are on earth to free mephisto who's locked up in las vegas as we learned in the uh, doctor strange damnation storyline that's where johnny blaze first became king of hell was in that storyline so if you haven't checked that out please do we haven't done like a review or discussion of that uh, series yet, but we probably will coming up maybe. But I feel like it's kind of a precursor to this. It's not that big of a deal, so we might not for a while. So, uh, but definitely go pick up Doctor Strange: Damnation. It's a really good book, and uh, like it does, like I said, it kind of sets all this stuff up. So that's where Mephisto gets captured and he's locked up in Las Vegas. Uh, and Wong from Doctor Strange is kind of like the guardian, protecting, making sure no one breaks him out. And then Johnny Blaze at that same time, since the King of Hell was stuck on earth there needs to be someone to rule hell and uh, hell chose johnny blaze so johnny blaze is now on earth you know using his now satan powers as he's you know or mephisto powers as he's becoming you know the longer he's the the ruler of hell the more powerful and corrupt he becomes so he's going through that transformation but in that road that he's do, you know on that journey he found his brother danny ketch who's like the kind of the main focus of this book it's both of them really but he finds danny ketch who's become a ghostwriter again and he takes the spirit of vengeance out of his brother and he robs him of his abilities and in the last issue danny ketch was okay with that but then after meeting caretaker and, and talking to his ex-girlfriend at one point uh, he learned that you know what he does have a destiny he does have a, a role to play in all this and if anyone's going to take down his brother johnny blaze it's going to be danny ketch so uh, in the last episode or last issue, we talked about uh, Johnny Blaze nearing Vegas and he was like on his way to Vegas because obviously he knew that's where the demons were going to, uh, you know, to bust uh, Mephisto out. So while that's happening, uh, that's what this issue is. This incoming book is just three pages of Johnny Blaze heading to Vegas. So you see him doing that. I love this shot where it's like the camera is looking at him this way. And then when you turn it upside down, it says vroom as he drives by heading to uh, Vegas and it shows it in reverse. It's like, I was like, that's pretty cool. Like the camera, like, you know, it was, it's like trying to, yeah, it's, it's hard to do things like that visually in comic books. Cause you're like, how do I direct this scene? And that just made me think of a movie where it's like the motorcycle drives under the camera and the camera looks up upside down uh, at the destination. So yeah, I was like, that's pretty cool. So they arrive at the hell, uh, hotel Inferno and that's where a bunch of demons are trying to, uh, you know, wage war on the front door and they're trying to get in, but Wong is fighting them off and Ghost Rider is showing up to help. He takes a couple of them down. Uh, that's just wave one. And he's like, all right, Wong, step out of the way. I came from Mephisto. And that's really all that's in that book. It's just those three pages. And uh, so it's not much. So that leads right into this book, uh, issue four by Ed Breeson and Aaron Cooter, who's returning on artwork. But I think Juan Fergari for does do a couple pages in here, you know, which is cool because I like Aaron Cooter's art a lot, but I really liked what Juan did in that last issue. I thought it was really awesome. So now we're in Brooklyn, New York, and we have the caretaker kind of going over stuff with Danny Ketch, and she's, you know, recruited him, and she's like, there's this big thing coming along. I've been privy to some of the information, but I don't know all the pieces. All I do know is that you need someone who can fight a spirit of vengeance, and I recently learned about this uh, entity in another realm called Necrosis, which is, we saw it's that centaur dude with the multiple arms who killed, like, um, that uh, that other ghost writer in a previous book like uh, a ghost writer that ended up going into limbo for a short time um and this necrosis guy killed it without even hesitation and with no effort almost so they're like we need something really powerful and caretakers like i learned about this thing called necrosis it's in limbo and limbo is run by a guy named belasco so you're gonna have to go find belasco and kind of negotiate with them and see if you can get necrosis to come back to earth with you and take out johnny blaze and hopefully still save him though because the last ghost writers are all 
the Ghost Riders that Necrosis ever killed, hey, they've just died. So we obviously want Johnny alive. So I'm going to work on a spell to do that, but I'm going to keep this portal open and you're going to have to walk through it. So I'm going to be on this side holding it open the best I can and thinking of a way to save Johnny, but you need to go get Necrosis and bring him back here. So that's what Johnny's mission is throughout this book is he's kind of wandering through limbo. And meanwhile, what Johnny Blaze is doing is he's actually fighting with Wong and they're defeating wave after wave of monsters and demons. And then finally, when they do, Johnny Blaze turns back into human. He's like, all right, thanks, Wong. I'm going inside. And Wong's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, you're not. He's like, I'm protector of Mephisto. And he's like, you cannot go in there. And Johnny Blaze's like, I'm not asking, dude. And he's like, uh, he's like, well, I'm telling you. So Wong pulls out his, you know, magic, hits Johnny, and Johnny's like, all right, you threw the first punch, and I want you to remember that when I kick the living crap out of you. So the two of them fight, and then Johnny, of course, he's getting stronger as he's, you know, more connected to hell, so he's, uh, he takes, he takes down Wong, uh, fairly easily. Wong does put up a pretty decent fight, considering, uh, but, uh, but Johnny does defeat him, chains him up, and then uses the penance stare on him, and he's like, I know you're not a sinful person, Wong, but every man, every person on the planet has at least one little sin that uh, eats away at them. He's like, so I'm going to find yours and you're going to temporarily be, you know, uh, decommissioned while you relive that that horrible sin that you've done uh, or that that thing you consider your your sin or whatever. So I was like, that's kind of neat because it's like, yeah, the penance stare does not work on Venom, by the way, uh, but I like that it, it, it worked here, but on a very small scale. And I like how focused it was because that's something unique. I was like, well, that's a way to take an old ability and do something new and interesting with it and we talked about that before where I kind of don't like some of the Venom stuff lately because it feels like it takes it's like oh here's what we used to do in the comics but now we're just doing something completely different um, this is Ed Breeson actually going what are the abilities Ghost Rider had and how can we do new things with them and I like that there was a pinpoint focus on like the one little thing that Wong thinks he's, he's done wrong in his life and focus on that so that was pretty neat and then meanwhile Johnny Blaze does actually bust Mephisto out um, and so and then chains him up and drags him out of the hotel so uh, so yeah in the next issue I guess we're going to see some of that going on uh, where Johnny Blaze like I need to get him to a safer spot because they're just going to keep sending demons I'm going to take him to an undisclosed spot so that's what Johnny Blaze is theoretically doing but I'm sure he's going to also ask him about like being leader of hell because there's a lot of things Johnny's doing now that he doesn't fully understand so I feel like he's going to try to get answers from Mephisto but can you believe Mephisto especially after the relationship that him and Johnny has had uh, I'm going to say no and speaking of that we are going to talk about that in the next episode Marvel Tales Ghost Rider we are going to talk a little bit about uh, Johnny Blaze and and kind of his connection to Mephisto and kind of their their origin in a way like the retelling of it um so anyway we go to limbo which by the way a slight note here limbo is written in a very similar green as this background is uh, I know it, maybe that was intentional because it's like it, it blends in. So you're like, oh, it's limbo. You know, like you're supposed to, it's, it's supposed to kind of be there, but not maybe there, that was the reason they did it. Uh, but I really wish that was like in white because, <laughs> because it's like, it's hard to see. I'm like, uh, I, I could, I barely could see it, but obviously I know that Danny's in limbo. So Danny is, he's in limbo and he's like, I wish I had a drink before I came here. And, uh, and he kind of comes across a castle. And of course it's the castle of Belasco, the person who's in charge of, uh, limbo. And look at that. He he looks like Mephisto. He's like a demon. Um, and so they even mentioned that he's cut from the same cloth as Mephisto. So I'm really curious to see and learn more about Belasco now. Because when I saw him, I was like, wow, okay. So he's like an actual demon looking thing. But he has no care. And Johnny, he's like, Johnny Blaze, like, please, you got to help us. My brother's in trouble. The, there's a ghost rider on Earth who's now the king of hell. And it's upsetting the balance. And, uh, and Belasco just starts laughing at him. And he's just like, dude, I don't care. <laughs> he's like, I don't care about any of that. He goes like, you humans always think you're the center of everything. He's like, nothing that's happening sounds interesting to me. I don't, it upsets the balance of what? He's like, I don't feel the upset of the balance. He's like, you're, he's like, you're talking crazy, man. He's like, I don't care that you need my help. And he goes, but you know what? I am intrigued. You're a human and you came all this way uh, just to get my attention. He goes, so well, you know what? I'll hear you out. And he goes, but if you're going to, if you're going to talk to me, you're going to have to kill something for me. You're going to have to kill necrosis. And so necrosis is coming up. And I thought this was where the book was going to end, but luckily it did not. Uh, you actually see a battle between necrosis and Danny and Danny gets his butt kicked, but he does keep getting up to give him credit, man. This is a thing that kills ghost riders. So it does not go easy on him and it does try to kill him. And Danny stays a step ahead of it a couple times, but ultimately 
he does lose the fight. And I'm like, wow, that's great. That's a great way to not wimp out this character already, you know, because you obviously you're touting him as being a powerful entity and they didn't wimp him out. He full on beats Danny in a fight like easily. Uh, but Danny does just surprise him a little bit, but Danny doesn't even get any blows in or nothing. He can't even make contact with the, with the necrosis because he stands, you know, necrosis stands like three feet taller than him and he's got six arms. And he's got all these weapons. So Danny is lucky to be alive. And then right when Danny's about to get killed by necrosis, who's standing over him, um, that's when uh, our friend here, uh, Belasco, chops off the head of Necrosis and kills it. And Danny's like, "What? Why would you do that? Why? Why would you? Why would you kill your one guy here, like your guardian?" And and Belasco's like, "I have other guardians." He's like, "I don't care about Belasco." Uh, he goes, "But I I do have other goals." And he goes, uh, "I don't want to be in limbo forever." And he goes, "And I have my own uh, machinations and my own plans." And he goes, "And you you've just provided me an opportunity to enact one of them on Earth." And he goes, "So." You know what? You being here is, is kind of interesting. And he's like, and I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let you live. He goes, but you're gonna live and you're gonna be something of mine. He's like, you're not a spirit of vengeance anymore. So he kneels down and he touches the blood of uh, necrosis and he spatters it on Danny uh, Ketch here. And then Danny uh, starts his head starts burning and he's like, no no no. And he runs over and grabs the sword. And uh, Belasco says, yeah no, you're no longer a spirit of vengeance. Now you're my new you know necrosis. You're my spirit of corruption. And so that's that entity that we saw here. On the next issue is as uh, Danny Ketch. Uh, so they're doing Heart of Darkness Part Two, which we talked briefly about in our collections video, where there's uh, that those two one shots where it's a uh, Punisher, Wolverine, and Danny Ketch teaming up to do something against Blackheart. So it looks like they're calling the next issue um, Heart of Darkness Two, uh, which is funny because there was there was Heart of Darkness One, and then there was like something else of darkness. So uh, so I guess this will essentially be the third part, even though it's the Heart of Darkness Two, but it's the third part of that trilogy storyline. Um, that they're going to bring back. So again, yeah, uh, Ed Breeson's doing a killer job of tying in old, uh, you know, connections, old stories, and bringing it to the front uh, for modern day, but also not retconning it really. Like just kind of going, here's the elements that were there. Let's let's try to keep as many of that because obviously when you're writing a story, you got to retcon a little. Sometimes I completely understand that, but the way he does it is like, all right, we're going to change a few things, but we're going to try not to break, uh, you know, the initial concepts or the initial storylines. And that's what I really appreciate. So this book has been fantastic. I love this series and I highly recommend you checking it out. And hopefully the digital code popped up, you know, while I was talking about it. It's a fantastic issue and I definitely think you should go get it. It's one of my favorite Marvel books right now. Uh, that The Doctor Doom book is pretty good, but I think this one is now definitely edged up ahead of everybody else and become my favorite Marvel book. Just, just, just because I love the attention to detail. I love the lore. I love the artwork. Um, and I love the world building they're doing and they're doing such a fantastic job at it. So please go check it out for yourself if you haven't already. And if you have read it, let me know your thoughts down below. And if you haven't, you just heard my thoughts here, let me know yours down below as well. And we'll continue our conversation down there. But definitely still, when this comes out in trade, if you don't have it by now, pick it up. Please do. It's super awesome. And if you're not a Ghost Rider fan, I feel like this book might turn you into one. Sure, there's a lot of Easter eggs and things in there for people like me, but I think it also tells a really great story for new readers as well. And uh, so I'd love to hear some from some of you new readers out there who just, you know, come across this book. I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, definitely, so I can get that perspective as well. So thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in hell. Peace.